Sandra McArdle started her business called Currency Energy Systems to help companies and communities do well by doing good. That means thinking about how they use energy and other resources in a way that helps their bottom line and their communities. For our Earth Day show, McCarl spoke with MIF producer Megan Kamerick about how we can all think differently about our resources and what kinds of opportunities exist in New Mexico to leverage this knowledge. Sandra McArdle, thank you for joining us on New Mexico in Focus. Thank you very much for having me. Well, you started this company, Current Sea Energy Systems, in the 90s, and you help companies and communities and tribal communities increase their energy effectiveness. So what made you want to do this kind of work? Well, I think part of it is that I, one of the things that's important is building relationships that are long-term, that are not transactional, that develop trust and help increase energy effectiveness. And we define energy effectiveness as something that allows you to be more energy efficient mm -hmm. and to be better at what you do. An organization or a community or a tribe is not really concerned just with reducing energy use. They want to be better at what they do. So that's why we, we phrase it in that way. Does that sort of turn their mind around uh, or change their thinking about, oh, it's not just putting in, you know, compact fluorescent light bulbs and using less water. It's more holistic. We hope it does. Okay. And sometimes it works that way when we're lucky, but in every project we do, it's really more of a collaboration. Mm -hmm. we, we try not to describe ourselves as consultants because we're not focusing on a problem. We describe ourselves as advisors because what we're doing is working as a team to help them do what they need to do better. And energy and water are two of the things that touch everything. So no matter what you're doing, something there is related to both energy and water. So you came of age around the first Earth Days. We're airing this ahead of Earth Day. And some of these ideas now you're working with as a company, I'm guessing maybe in the 70s were sort of considered on the fringe, like, oh, that's nice, but we're here to do business. So has that evolved? Because now you have a whole company based on these kinds of ideas of thinking long term, thinking holistically, thinking about the earth. Yes and no. The, if, you, if you look back in the financial literature, the, I was in high school on the first Earth Day, and if you look back in the financial literature, that was a time where people were talking about social responsibility for the first time. Okay. And then it kind of became less important as the economy went through its various ups and downs. So I see it really as a, as a return to what was going on in the 70s and even as a return to things that happened long before that in historic or even prehistoric times. I just see it as a continuum hmm. in a way. So talk about some of your experiences when we're talking about a time of great change of climate change and how you help people understand that adapting to changes is going to benefit them <laughs> and their company and their community. Well, when you're talking about climate change, it's a complicated, uh, it's a complicated issue because it's become something that is politicized in what seems to me a pretty much senseless way. My family, like most, has folks on either end of the spectrum. And so I look back to what was, what were some of my formative experiences. And I see it in business terms rather than in political terms. I have an MBA, I don't have a mm -hmm. political science degree, so that's probably mm -hmm. part of it. But my first job out of college, or out of business school, was working for a company called Parker Pen. And this is not a Parker Pen. <laughs> and <laughs> there are very few of them left in the US because Parker refused to change. And they 
refuse to become anything other than a pen company. Mm -hmm. So they were acquired by their British subsidiary and everything in the U.S. was closed. The jobs moves, moved overseas, kind of what, like what's happening now. So there are parallels today for communities and companies that don't yeah, think about change? Yeah, I think change. so. I think so. Okay. The change is something that is happening and we can argue until the cows come home about what percentage of it is human caused. But, you know, you just look around New Mexico, you look around Albuquerque, you know something's changing. And given that, it is in our interest to change what we do because if we don't do that, if we don't adapt to what's going on and change our companies, our communities, our tribes, it will be something that happens to us. What kinds of opportunities do you think are here in New Mexico right now around renewable energy, energy efficiency, that could help us move ahead economically and environmentally and that we might be missing? Whew. You know, New Mexico really is in a great position in a variety of ways. We have a lot of sun. We have the number two solar resource nationally as a state. We have a lot of wind. Strangely enough, the wind is where people don't live, so there are challenges associated with that because people don't move, don't don't want to live where the wind blows, blows all the time. All the time. <laughs> I come from Wyoming. Mm -hmm. I moved here from Wyoming, so you know I'm familiar with wind, and um, so you have those. You also have things that we could see as challenges or we could see as opportunities. We have aging infrastructure. We have buildings that are in need of a lot, uh, have been subjected to deferred maintenance, i.e. nobody's kept them up. Those are real opportunities to make them better, more comfortable, prettier, more efficient, less costly. And we could lead the way in terms of showing how to, to live with less or live in a place of scarcity? Scarcity, scarcity is some, sometimes a negative way of putting it. Okay. Another way of putting it might be to figure out how to change what are threats into opportunities. Waste, for instance, if you take a really simple example, one of the things we waste most in buildings is heat, mm -hmm. especially here where we need to cool everything and the waste product is heat. If you have a reason to use that heat, if you have a laundry facility in your building, for instance, or a kitchen or anything else that needs to be preheated, you can recapture that heat and reuse it. So if we think of things, think of things differently, okay, you can move forward. Well, I wanna continue this a little bit on the web, so stick around, but I really thank you for coming and talking to us and for our Earth Day themed show. Well, thank you very much.